Welcome to the GTN show. This week we have loads of brilliant news. The PTO are offering maternity pay to the pros. There's currently a huge triathlon prize draw going on at the moment. Plus, in December, there's your chance to do your very own Everesting. On top of all that, we've got some exciting developments in the world of tech. All right, I think we should start with some good news. And this involves the PTO and the USA Triathlon Foundation. And together, they have launched the COVID-19 Relief Fund as we lead into Daytona, the huge Challenge Championship race that's happening in just a couple of weeks' time. Now, there's two aspects to this. The first part, they are actually getting a lot of the pros, past and present, involved. The likes of Daniela Reef, the Brownleys, Jan Fredino, Lucy Charles, Mark Allen, Amongst them, they're donating either their time or some merchandise or various prizes. And there's going to be this huge prize draw, which is going on at the moment. There is it's 10 days, so it's the 10 days leading in to the Daytona Championship. And each day, there's five different prizes up for grabs. Now, this actually started on Monday, so you probably don't want to hear, but some of the things that you might have already missed, there was um, a virtual smoothie making with Daniela Reef. Lisa Norden had a guided turbo training session. I reckon that would have been pretty tough. However, there are still... Hang on, we're the third day in. There's still seven days, or well, eight of you include today, left to enter and to get some of these prizes. Today's prizes, for example, um, is a private Zwift ride with Sebastian Keenley. I reckon that's going to be pretty cool, as well as a 12-month free Zwift subscription. Also today, there's a chance to win a Hoob Brownlee Agilis wetsuit, care of Alistair and Johnny. Um, and the list goes on. There's race passes. I mean, there's five huge prizes every day. So if I were you, I would get in and enter that prize draw because you're also helping out a brilliant cause. So this relief fund, they're hoping to basically reach out to anyone in the triathlon industry who has been hit as a result of the pandemic. So whether that's race directors, clubs, triathletes, coaches, and this is going to be a worldwide relief fund. And there's also an opportunity to donate live during the Daytona race. Uh, a little bit more about that one. Basically, during during the live stream, there's an opportunity to just donate your mon money there and you can even say where you'd like that relief fund to go and what country you're from, but also what country you might want to direct those funds towards. Have you ever been tempted by an Everesting attempt on your bike? Well, that is the equivalent of obviously climbing the height of Mount Everest, 8,448 meters. It's pretty epic. Well, there is an opportunity now to do this virtually. Thanks to RGT, a virtual cycling platform, they have launched this initiative. They've teamed up with Everesting CC and the World Bicycle Relief to give you the opportunity to complete this in December. Now, you might be really dedicated, fit, or maybe slightly crazy, and you want to go for it and do it all in one go. Well, hats off to you and good luck. If you do decide to do that, well, if you complete it, you will get into the Everesting CC Hall of Fame once it's been validated. However, for the rest of us, and probably a little bit more realistic, you have the whole of December. So this challenge starts on December the 1st, all the way up until December the 30, 31st, and you've got the option of various different real roads, including Mont Ventoux, also the Stelvio Pass, and you basically can complete this over as many days as you like within the month. As long as you raise some money for World Bicycle Relief, then you will get a certificate at the end of your completion, and a virtual jersey as well, I think, to go and ride on that free platform. And we have some more great news again from the PTO as they have just announced a maternity pay for the professional female athletes. And they are offering to freeze their rankings and give them their annual bonus for the 15 month period from when they first get pregnant until six months after the birth. So really encouraging female participation at that top level and for women to come back into the sport. And we're seeing athletes being able to compete later and later in, you know, in a professional career. So it's brilliant to see that they're doing their best to make this sport equal. And I think triathlon is brilliant an example to other sports already because we have equal prize money and you know, there's a lot of equality within the sport. 
being a fairly young sport, that's certainly helped her. But this is another initiative that's just brilliant to see and hopefully other sports will start to follow. They have taken the sort of initiative from tennis and they've seen that tennis have been freezing rankings for the female players there. So there's a lot of influence coming over from that. But there's also some good news for the dads because uh, apparently parental leave will actually allow male and female members who become parents to take a four month break from racing without it actually affecting ranking or the related bonus. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned Adrian with his epic triathlon challenge. Now, he is attempting to get into the Guinness Book of Records for doing the world's longest ever triathlon, a total of seven and a half thousand kilometers. Yeah, I had to even think about that one. It's ridiculous. Well, he's actually starting off on the run, then doing the bike and then the swim. And due to the pandemic and the limited travel, he's having to do all of this in Singapore where he lives. And I think we've got another update from Adrian here. Hi, Heather and Mark. Man, I thought you don't want to see another shiny place with palm trees or whatever. You want to see the nitty gritty. Now it is midnight Friday night. I've just finished another 30 and that is 530 kilometers. The same as London, London to Edinburgh straight or Nairobi to Mombasa or Stockholm to Sundsvall. Check it out. Look guys, I'm doing this for practical action. I'm killing it now. I'm feeling great. You know, all those niggles have gone. I'm really cruising. 60 a day is becoming a normal habit. Watch this space. I'm on a bike soon and then I'm really going to cruise. I can't wait for the bike section, but I have another like 900 to go on foot, but it's going well. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to see you soon. On to tech. And you know, here at GTN, we love tech. Well, this next story is just brilliant. A blind man in New York has just run a 5K round Central Park unaided without a guide dog and without a guide. All of this thanks to artificial intelligence and a new development. Well, Thomas Panic, the age of 50, is a very keen runner and runs 5Ks and up to marathons. And has been limited by the speed of his guide runners, which has given him some frustration. Well, he's gone and done something about this and teamed up with an AI company who have managed to devise an app and a device that through a smartphone can actually sense the guideline of a track and then with the blind runner wearing an earpiece can actually be told where they need to be running. So as a result of this, he is now free to run and said it's the most liberating development ever. So a brilliant piece of new tech there. For this next piece, you might want to rewind three years, back to 2017, when we saw the launch of the Reap bike. It's a beam bike, so it's got no seat tube and seat stays. And we actually featured it just ahead of Kona 2017, when Harry Wiltshire, the British athlete, was riding it that year at the big race. Well, they have just had an updated version. This is the Reap Vulcan. So the first was Generation 1, now we've got the Reap Vulcan, apparently named after the Avro Vulcan, which was a pioneering strategic bomber introduced in 1956, the early jet era. Well, I think we've hopefully moved technology on quite a bit from there, but they've obviously been learning from that. And this one, they're proud to say, apparently has integrated BTA hydration, proprietary rear storage, which allows for two bottles to be carried, eight gels and a toolbox behind the saddle. So keeping it out of the wind. Now, obviously we don't see so many of these beam bikes anymore. They have been around from the early 2000s, but this one is a new development and there's been a lot of work done on its aerodynamics. It's apparently available to order now and orders will start heading out from the start of January in 2021. It is a British company and apparently the bike is purely made in the UK. On to race news and there weren't any big triathlon events which meant there was a stacked field for the Z Pro Tri Series, the race that Zwift are putting on for the pro triathletes and it's over three weeks. This was the middle week, the second week of racing. Three races packed into just a couple of hours for both the men and the women and it gets pretty intense. If you want to take a look behind the scenes, well Mark actually headed over to watch Joe Skipper in real life, in person, racing virtually on Zwift. So take a look at that that went out a few days ago. Now leading into the second week, we actually had Anthony Costas and Emma Pallant who were at the top of the table. But well, last week, Ruth Arsene had obviously fully recovered from her Ironman because she won the first race. It was then Anna Luxford who won the scratch race and Melanie Mora who won the TT. But Ruth gained enough points throughout the three races to take the overall win last week. And on the men's 
men's race. It was Mike Phillips who crossed the line first in race one, but Anthony Costa's apparently pretty much cleaned up on the points. He won the second race and then Martin Van Riel went on to win the time trial. Well, tonight is the final of the three weeks, so be sure to tune into that. It's at the current standings leaves Amelia Watkinson and Anthony Costas leading the overall series, so all to play for. And I actually tuned into a little bit last week and I have to admit, it's pretty exciting racing and they come thick and fast. You've got six races within two hours, so it's a great thing to tune into, I would recommend. And talking of Zwift, whilst I've got your attention, very quickly, it is currently the 25th of November, so you've got four days left to sign up to the Zwift Triathlon Academy if you haven't done so already. So please come and join me. I'm working my way through those workouts at the moment, getting close to the races, but you have until the 23rd of December to complete it. So if you haven't signed up and you're tempted, go do it now. It's time to look at your photos and see what you guys have been up to. And you haven't disappointed this week because it looks like there's still plenty going on down in the Southern Hemisphere. So we're just going to daydream for a moment if you're in the Northern Hemisphere with me because there was a brilliant race over in South Africa in Neisner, the Neisner Extreme Triathlon. And it's pretty extreme. It's five kilometre swim, 174k bike, and then a 50k run. Well, this one has been sent in by Henrik Venter. And he said there were 23 athletes athletes starting off. He's given us a bit of a race report here. 22 finished. He's quite proud to say he finished 14th and he sent, um, well, the race report here, well, says Magda Neuvot um, was his best performance in his view of the day. She narrowly came second behind Manfred Vihan to finish as the first female athlete and almost first overall. So sounds pretty impressive over that mega distance. And he sent in some photos of himself and the tri team, as well as a group photo of all the athletes who took part in the truly extreme race. I think they also have a shorter distance race. So if it does take your fancy, don't be put off by that extreme, but it's an absolutely beautiful place. I've been lucky enough to do a half marathon than there many years ago. It takes me back and, well, very envious indeed. And thank you, Henrik, for going to the effort of sending those in. Well, this next one comes from Pixie. Now, she says it's from her living room. I'm not sure what country she's in, but she is sporting her new, riding her new turbo trainer and sporting her new GTN top and a nice cuppa. Lovely. Well, I have a feeling, Pixie, that you might be British. I mean, we love our cups of tea, don't we? I mean, having it on the turbo is taking it to extreme, but do let us know where your living room is. But a lovely picture and great CG tin kit. Thank you. Uh, next, Martin has his felt B16 TT and he's in Toronto, Canada. Says, adding new lights to the pain cave brought it up two levels for training fun on Zwift. Channing Lucy and Reese's pain cave for inspiration. And he sent us two photos here. I mean, that looks, yeah. Pretty cave-like, doesn't it? I'm sure Lucy and Reese would be proud if they saw that one. We're going outside for this next photo. Not literally, but with the picture. It's from Owen uh, in Potter's Bar, Hertfordshire. Yeah, in the UK. We've had a lot of rain recently. It's been pretty muddy. You might have noticed in some of our videos. Well, he says here his girlfriend, housemate and himself went for a chilled run the morning after torrential rain. I mean, that doesn't narrow it down. Um, it unexpectedly turned into a swim run. And interestingly, he'd even uploaded this into the swimming folder, which made me chuckle. But um, good effort, Owen. I hope you got through there. I mean, looks like your girlfriend has to presume you did too. Uh, next from Ankit, uh, he's um, in Baran Rajasthan in India. Now, this is pretty impressive. I was 105 kilos two years ago and I'd never run. I started running and lost 20 kilos in weight, but then he apparently still wants to lose 10 kilos more and improve his running, um, running a half marathon in under one hour 40. Well, Anki, best of luck for that. And what a huge progression. Hopefully you can keep that up. Lovely picture too, thank you. And yeah, that is it. I've just realized we got to the end of our photos that I've chosen today. Some brilliant selections. So you guys get an idea whether it's indoors, outdoors, you're racing, you're training, whatever it is you're doing, do let us know. And you can share them with us using the GTN uploader it's on screen now, also in the description below. Onto the caption competition. And this week, you guys have really been brilliant with your suggestions. We had this photo last week and I've got quite a few 
runners up because they're just great. And it looks like you guys went into the detail here. I didn't notice that one of the guys was on a road bike wearing socks and one was on a TT bike without socks. So there's been a bit of um, consensus here that it's cyclists versus triathletes. But uh, we'll come to that um, couple of those captions in a moment. The first one from John S. Le, go big or go home. Savage poet, it's true, triathletes and roadies don't see eye to eye. Will Hogarth, the moment on a Zwift meetup when your avatar goes off in the wrong direction. I haven't experienced that, but I can imagine the frustration. Mark Fitzgerald, I'm loving these 70 inch wheels. Bike and dog trips. So this is what happens when wearing a VR headset for your Zwift workout. I mean, that'll be the day, won't it? But the winner this week comes from Robert Natasi. Rider in blue says to the rider in pink, is that a giant bike? I love it. There were quite a few on the giant theme there, but well done, Robert, do get in touch and we will get a cap sent over to you. And this week, for your chance to win a GTN cap, we have this picture from the Valencia World Cup. Before you go, I want to tell you about something quite exciting. As you probably know, Black Friday is upon us, well, in a couple of days, but we are celebrating already here at GTN with these brand new t-shirts. Not sure if you've noticed, but, and I don't know if I can show you well, but this actual little bit of writing is silver and sparkly, which I think is pretty cool. It's kind of Christmassy already. And the great news is they are in the shop at a 40% discount at the moment. The bad news, they are a limited edition. So once they're gone, they are gone. And this is the only one I have and I'm keeping my hands on it. I personally love it. So if you like the look of these, you need to head over to the GTN shop pretty promptly. But before you do that, keep an eye out for a couple of very exciting videos we have this weekend. I mentioned that Mark visited Joe Skipper. Well, he's going to be showing us a video of the day in the life of Joe Skipper coming out on the weekend as well as what is an FKT. Well, if you are intrigued, you'll have to tune in over the weekend. And if you've enjoyed the show today, do give us a like. Remember, you can subscribe by simply hitting the globe. And a couple of videos you might want to take a look at. Again, it is Joe Skipper in that Z Pro Tri-Race series we mentioned. That is just down here. And Mark and I competing in an elevation gain competition just here. Or here. Can't remember. I think they're over here, actually.